We're here with uh, Johns Hopkins today, speaking with uh, the Dean of Johns Hopkins, D uh, Dean Miller, and we also have with us down in Miami, uh, Dean Goldschmidt. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, the topic of uh, accountable care organizations, which is something that uh, will be mandated to be implemented by the ACA Affordable uh, Care Act, the new health care reform law. So this is um, a fairly high priority for most medical centers and, and leaders such as yourself. Um, you recently wrote a perspective in the New England Journal, and um, so I thought we'd maybe start out with you, please. If you could uh, give an introduction of what is an ACO, some of the key components of it. Well, <clears throat> uh, ACOs are one way to manage the care of a population of people, and I think when you talk about ACOs, there are a variety of pieces of that. You can go from where you manage a small portion of a population all the way to taking care of all the medical needs of a population of individuals for which you get paid a premium per month per member. And with that premium per month per member, you need to supply everything. And you are at, depending on where you are in this, either at total financial risk, some financial risk, or minimal financial risk. And. What, what is, the goal is to do what? Is it right now the current situation they think that uh, the specialists might not be cooperating with the primary care as well? What's really the essence here? Not just to cut costs, but also to do what? I think, you know, still flattening the cost curve is one of the biggest issues. But actually making sure that patients are getting real value for the monies that are being paid. Right now, fee-for-service you just crank the wheel one more time, there's not a lot of correlation between um, the number of procedures or visits that you make and the quality of care. Where an accountable care organization, it behooves the providers to provide the best quality of care, at the same time making sure they have their costs under control. And, uh, and Dr. Goldschmidt, uh, we'll direct this to you because I believe you have a new uh, uh, system-wide IT system there, or electronic medical records, and a key component to allowing all of the various caregivers to properly coordinate care, not duplicate efforts, not duplicate tests, is to have a good electronic system. And could you describe how you did it there recently, uh, some of the details of your new system? Yes, certainly. Um, I, um, you know, Steve, uh, very much as uh, Ed mentioned, what we want is to bring the best value to our patients. And one of the challenges of uh, bringing value is to make sure that um, information is readily available to uh, the, the providers, both uh, physicians and nurses, uh, all the individuals that contribute to the care of patients, and therefore, uh, we decided um, a little bit more than a year ago to deploy a very large um, uh, system, electronic uh, medical record system, across our enterprise. And uh, by uh, this past summer, uh, we had all of our ambulatory uh, sites that were uh, basically uh, connected to the um, uh, system. And then this past December, we also uh, had our revenue cycle uh, fully integrated within, within the system. So. Um, what, what it provides is, first of all, a uh, much more uh, user-friendly, if you will, access to all information that we are collecting uh, on our patients. Uh, but it goes way beyond that. It's also a way for patients to be able to um, access their own record, to um, uh, establish connection uh, uh, via particular programs uh, with their care provider in ways that were not possible in the past. And in general, I think that um, it is contributing to adding value uh, and, and to helping uh, with, the, um, with the maximization of uh, doing more with less. Because um, as Ed mentioned, uh, uh, the, um, uh, the future uh, probably will require for us to be more effective in the way we use uh, the scarce resources that are available to, um, to care for patients. And, and, and this is a very important uh, step for us. Uh, it was uh, quite interesting to get a, a complete um, uh, practice uh, of physicians to, to learn the system, to be ready for the implementation, and then, uh, you know, on day one of the system, uh, basically have all the patients admitted according to the system and, um, and everybody enter entering the information on the system. 
uh, and, and same thing for the revenue cycle. Uh, we had about uh, 19 uh, billion units that have been reduced to one uh, simply by the uh, effectiveness of uh, what we have implemented. So I think that in the long run, we, we, we believe that it will bring a lot of, um, a lot of uh, goods for the patients. Um, it will help us also integrate very important clinical research uh, aiming at improving uh, the care of patients day in, day out. And um, I'm very much looking forward to, to see the uh, uh, various application of the system uh, to providing our patients with the best possible care. And uh, up here in Johns Hopkins, where do you stand? Have you already uh, formulated a system? Are you looking into it now as you speak? Uh, we're, uh, as Pascal said, we all think uh, an integrated uh, health information system is critical. I think most of us have had very good electronic patient records in-house in our hospitals. We've not done the same thing and not integrated what we have in our outpatient. So we're in the final stages of negotiation. This is a very large purchase for us. It's about $600 million uh, that will be spread out over a period of years. Uh, as Pascal and others have found, uh, implementation is not easy. It doesn't, all, doesn't solve all the problems because both the how you do your work and how you enter the data is different than we're doing now. But we think, as Pascal has pointed out, critically important as we move forward. The fact that the patients also will be able to see their records, see their trends, look at their weights, look at their cholesterol, look at their PSA. All of those are gonna be very important in terms of people looking and thinking about preventive things that they should do. Because you know, oftentimes we have been put in a position of taking care of the patient. Where is the patient taking care of themselves?